Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and today I want to teach you about some strange ways that numbers could be counted. Now, often when other ways of counting numbers are suggested, it's something like base 12 or base 6, which are highly divisible, or base 2, which is very simple and similar to computers, but those are far from the weirdest or coolest extensions that we could take numerical bases to. Now, each of those bases I mentioned have a lot in common. They're positional bases where each position in them represents how many of a certain power of the base number we have. Starting from the zeroth power, which always is going to be a one's place, and then a b's place, a b squared's place, and so on. And if we add a number with a decimal point and digits after that, those are the negative powers of b one at a time. And we're used to b being 10, where that's ones, tens, hundreds, tenths, hundredths, and so on. And we're used to needing to use a character for all of the numbers zero through nine which is the number one less than our base number. So in base six, we would only need characters for zero through five. In base 12, we'd need a new character for 10 and 11 to represent those with a single digit. And B is typically a number greater or equal to two, because if we wanna just use digits going up to B minus one, Base one wouldn't really work in this way. You can kind of think of tally marks where every number is a hyper 11 whose size is just how many tally marks there are as kind of like a base one, but it doesn't follow the same rules because using the digits from all the numbers up through B minus one would be just using zeros in a base one, and that's not gonna work the same way. So we typically hear bases suggested where the B number is an integer two or greater. But what if we just changed these rules ever so slightly? If I follow these rules, I can design a numerical base with an integer two or greater as my base number, but one didn't really work because it was too close to zero, basically. So what about other integers that are more than one away from zero, like negative two or negative three or negative 10? Well, maybe I can edit this definition a little to include base numbers that are integers whose absolute value is at least two, meaning the number's distance from zero, or essentially itself turning positive regardless of what the sign originally was. And maybe we can even edit this top definition and only need digits between zero and one under that absolute value of the base number. This would mean that unlike some experimental bases like balance ternary, where you actually have a character representing negative one of a thing, we would just be using the good old digits zero, one, two, three, and etc. that you're used to, but the base number itself would be something negative. To see what negative bases can do, let's start with base negative two and its similarities and differences to base two or binary. Now in the more familiar base two, each of these places represents how many of a given power of two we have. And if we're not using any decimals, then that starts at two to the zeroth power, which is one. So we basically have all these tools in our infinite toolkit that are the powers of two, including one, the zeroth power. And it turns out we can make any integer just by using up to one of each of these tools. Like if I want to make the number three, I can just take a two and a one. If I want to make the number four, I can just take a four and none of the others. If I want to make a five, I take a four, none of the twos, but one of the ones. And that translates into how we write a number in base two, putting ones on any of the spots where we used that number as a tool and putting a zero on any of the spots we didn't, and ignoring all the possible infinite zeros that could be written before the number. So what about base negative two? Well, if each of these places now represents how many of a power of negative two we want to add in, well, we still have a ones place, because negative two to the zeroth power is still one, and we actually still have a fours place there, 
because negative two squared is four, just like two squared was there in binary. And even on the fourth power's place, we get a normal 16. And any even power will end up being the same as before due to the negative two becoming positive when the even power is applied. But on all the spots with the odd powers, like negative two to the first power is just negative two, or negative two cubed is negative eight, I have new weirder tools in this toolkit. And this spot is how many negative twos I want to add in. That spots how many negative eights I want to put in. Well, I still can make all the integers just using these tools zero or one times each. Like how I made three before with binary was I took two and one and added those together. And now I don't have a normal two as a tool in base negative two, but I can still represent three by using a four, a negative two, and a one. And that'll be written in base negative two as one, 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 because these three spots can have the digit one because we used those three tools, essentially. However, after three, if I wanna represent the number four in base negative two, I only need to use a one there and a zero amount of the negative twos or ones. So the representation of four things in base negative two is 100. It looks to us kind of like it goes 111, then 100, then it kind of goes up as normal, then jumps up. You can notice some strange patterns here, like it doesn't go purely upward in the way we'd expect base two or base 10 to look. And also that for all of these positive integers, none of the representations in base negative two had an even number of digits, one digit, three digits, five digits, and the next ones for positive integers that weren't five digits would be seven digits. So what are the even digit amount strings? Why are they hiding from this list and what would they really mean? On this chart, although this might look like the binary numbers written counting upward, if these were symbols written by someone in a base negative two society, and I wanted to translate them into base 10 to see what amounts they were trying to convey. I would just need to see where the ones lied in a given string and add up one of each of what those spots signified. Ones, negative twos, fours, negative eights, or whatever. Like if I saw one, one, zero written in base negative two, that basically means there's a four, there's a negative two, and there's nothing else, which adds up to the number we know as two. And going forward, if we saw one, 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 that would break down into a four, a negative two, and a one, and mean three. And we could also consider this like a hyper 11 of base negative two, as I like to call numbers composed of just the digit one in some base, because they often have cool properties, and here they do. The hyper 11s in base negative two that turn out to be prime numbers like that are known as Wagstaff primes, and are a type of prime that has mathematical research put into it. But we're not gonna let the hyper 11s get us carried away. Let's move forward and see this number that looks like 1,000 now would just mean one of the negative eights and nothing else. So translated, that means negative eight. And we can see that the negatives even pop up earlier on this list. We get a negative two right at the one that looks like 10, which makes sense because that's the base number, negative two. And then we get a negative one as what this 11 looking one translates into. And in general, if I continued this pattern and translated them all, I would have a pretty chaotic order as you can see, but I would end up encountering not only every single positive integer, but also every single negative integer. Those negative ones, in fact, are exactly the ones with an even number of digits here that we're missing from that last chart. And in general, in a negative base of this sort, a string with an even number of digits will be a negative number, meaning just whole number digits, no fractions or anything. And a string with an odd number of digits will be zero or positive. 
And although in base 10 and similar bases, we need this negative sign minus sign symbol to differentiate between negative and positive numbers, in base negative two and similar bases, there's a representation of all the negative and positive integers without needing to get this negative symbol involved in the representation. So if base negative two is surprisingly functional and has all these abilities, what about other negative bases? Would some of these patterns stay true if we counted in base negative 10? So here in base negative 10, which does totally work, it's very similar to base negative two was with the differences that we're now making powers of negative 10, which do still become positive for all of the even powers and negative for all of the odd powers, and that we're now gonna need the digits zero through nine, the same digits that the positive version of this base would use, kind of like base negative two needed the zero and one from binary. But using 0 through 9 and this strange toolkit of flip-flopping powers of 10, we can build all the numbers. Like if I want to describe 4 of a thing, I just need to use 4 of the 1's place. And I can use up to 9 of each spot, so that's okay, I just write a 4 there. But if I want to describe a dozen of a thing, or 12, I can't make the 10 part of it using that place. I need to add in 100, subtract 90 by adding 9 of the 10s, and then add in 2, which makes 12, written in base negative 10, look like 192. And if I had two dozen of a thing, or 24, I would need to similarly take 100, now I'll add on just eight of the negative tens and four of the ones and write it as 184. If we look at a stretch of the number line with how we would write numbers on the bottom and base negative 10 translations of them on top, we can see it does look kind of jumpy again, although it does have longer strings where they seem to look ascending. But every single integer, including the negative ones, does have a representation without needing to get any negative signs involved in the representations. And like before, any negative number will have an even amount of digits in its representation, and any number that's zero or positive will have an odd amount of digits in it. And although these are just integers or whole numbers that I've been building here, if I put a decimal point and some more places after the decimal point that represented negative powers of negative 10, I could make fractional quantities or even try and represent irrational numbers. So if you want your own challenge, you could try and figure out how would something like base negative 10 or base negative 2 write a number like 11 and a half. And we could make other negative numbers into bases as well, because although we usually think of these positional number bases like our base 10 system as working for base numbers that are two or greater, like starting at binary, it's sort of actually like they work when the absolute value of your base number, or itself just being positive regardless of sign, is two or greater. Like we could do base two, three, or four, and so on, or base negative two, two, negative three, negative four, and so on, and make all the numbers using just the digits between zero and one under that absolute value of our base number. Like in base negative six, for another example, we could express numbers using the digits between zero and five, having each place be powers of negative six, and here's an example of its number line. Now to note, my recommendation for humans is still base positive 6 or positive 12, because the negative bases are harder to add or multiply numbers or do things like that. But I find it pretty awesome that the negative bases have a superpower that the positive bases don't. The ability to express positive or negative numbers without needing to use a negative sign in the symbol you have to write. And that's not the end of weird numerical bases that we could analyze. Because if we can turn base two into a base negative two, you know what's further beyond negatives is imaginary numbers. So later I'll show you base 
2i, which surprisingly can do some awesome things of its own. And there's other ways we could extend our thinking of strange bases as well. Like instead of imaginary bases, what about like fractional bases? or square root bases. Well, all of these are possibilities as well that I'll show you in the future. For now, try and think about how you'd express different numbers in base negative 10 or base negative two, and I hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you next time.